there. Welcome back to All Consuming. We're talking with Faye Farron, who's a private investigator in San Francisco. She's been pivotal, pivotal rather, pivotal, in solving some of the city's most notorious cases. Today, Faye's here to tell us about some con games and scams that are causing problems in the Bay Area. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, what is a confidence scam? Let's start with just the, the main phrase, because people hear it all the time. Okay. Well, what it is basically is any kind of a scam or fraud that relies upon getting the pigeons, for lack of a better term, their confidence. For mm -hmm. example, like right now, you read sometimes that the crime wave is actually going down, violent crimes are going down. Mm -hmm. The reason is, is because people get thrown in jail for, cri for violent crimes, and so they're turning to confidence schemes. And so what they're doing is they're gaining confidence, maybe a sweetheart scam, a pigeon drop on the street, and um, talking people out of their money, basically. And confidence, con artists. Yes. Those con confidence man. I always know. say take the con out of consumer. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so they do come in waves, these con games, you think? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it used to be that years ago, before we had television, everybody for socializing went out on the street corner and talked to each other. When that happened, you had con games like pigeon drops mm -hmm. and handkerchief switches and the kind of things that they did at the beginning of The Sting. Remember the old movie, The Sting? Right. Well, now, because we don't do that, anymore. We stay in our houses and we play on computers and so now we have internet scams. Right, right. And so it Although has gone... Pi pigeon drops are still happening too in the Bay Area. Oh, absolutely. Describe what a pigeon drop is for everybody. Oh, boy, that's a hard one. <laughs> You're a pigeon. Yeah. <laughs> Along comes the pigeon. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, basically what happens, it's a two-man, at least a two-man or a three-man team, and somebody approaches, usually an older person, and they say, oh, look, I found this money on the street, mm -hmm. and what should we do with it? We should give it back, but we don't know where it belongs. And besides, look at this. There's a note in it, and the note says that it's drug money, and meet me in Havana with the drug money. And mm -hmm. so the older person is put, first of all, on alert that this money doesn't really belong to anybody, that nobody's going to miss it, you know, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And it could be like they say $10,000. And what it is really is a, what they call a mish roll. And a mish roll is one bill on the outside and it's cut up newspaper. Mish. So, mish. For Mishmash? For Michigan, where they <laughs> used to do it. Oh, really? Yeah, where it started. And so along comes the second person and they, and they are part of it. Now, they are actually a singer. They come in and, and they pretend to be a stranger, but they're not, and they're in cahoots together. So, like you saw at the beginning of the movie, The Sting, if you remember mm -hmm. when it happened, they, it's, it's very confusing what they do. I don't know how it's so, it is so confusing, but basically what they do is they say, here, you have to take the money, let me show you how you do it. They, everybody puts their money together because it has to be goodwill money, and let me show you how it's done, and they stick it right in here, and what they do, of course, is they, they change it with the mish roll, and so they now have the pigeon's money, and the pigeon is left holding the mish roll, and they all go off to do something something and then they, and then she discovers what she thought she was holding all the money she isn't at all and a lot of people of course are, are too embarrassed to come forward because they realize that sometimes it's their own greed that's caused them to, yes. to be in this predicament well plus they were going to accept drug money you know right. they are implicated in a crime mm -hmm. so there's all mm -hmm. kinds of reasons they don't come forward what um, you know again the pigeon drop has been around for a long time although it still happens um, in my uh, job in the DA's office so we hear about these uh, you know a lot of times again um, an older person being taken in advantage of. Mm -hmm. um, but you're talking about internet fraud and, and the, the newer wave of, of crime that's mm -hmm. going on. Can you give us some examples? Well, yeah, the internet is really the latest thing. I mean, I have a wonderful saying, um, there's, wherever there's an opportunity, there's an opportunist. Mm -hmm. Well, internet crime didn't happen 20 years ago because there wasn't any internet. But now what happens is you've taken a really um, anonymous environment, more anonymous than meeting somebody on the street where they can recognize you, and you can perpetrate all kinds of crimes on the internet. And one of the things that's happening a lot is people meeting each other on the internet. And if you notice, you know, they write to the personals kind of thing and it's always a rock star, you know. <laughs> and we do a lot of these where we investigate. So I I met somebody on the internet and, and they say they're a rock star, but they won't tell me which one and, you know. Oh, so you then look them up? Yeah, so we, we find out who they really are, right. and then we say they're no rock star. They're not, you know? sorry. Oh, yeah, they're not a rock star so in many... Vacaville. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, the hearts oh, that are broken. Yes. And, and, yeah, but I, I would think, too, because people are so concerned about their privacy and worrying about what well, you know, what personal information is going to be used, that people are checking a, a little more than they used to on, um, you know, the people that they meet this way. Do you find that you're getting calls like that? Um, we do, but usually there's, um, there's just a little bit of doubt in there. We're not getting, well, on the Internet, we do get 
just, you know, flat out who is this person because it is such an anonymous environment. But there was a rumor going down a, uh, down a few years ago that people were checking people out before they ever went on a first date. Hmm. And that's just an unsubstantiated rumor. That's not really happening. Usually there's something that they're globbing. When, the, when I say, why do you want to do this background check? What is it that makes you uneasy? Right. You know, and they tell me, I go, ha, they're doing it, you know. <laughs> we don't even <laughs> save your money. Buyer beware before <laughs> yes. the date. All right. Well, Dater we, beware. We, did, yeah. we can take some calls from any of you out there who are interested in the, some of the con games that are going on in the Bay Area. And when we, uh, actually, the, the, it, the uh, phone number is right here, 1-800-94-BAY-TV. Uh, and while we're on the line with you personally and in, in reality here, live, everybody, <laughs> um, we, I'm, I'm just curious um, if you can just quickly give some of the warning signs that you see to something that, that probably is a scam. If, if, if there's an easy way for people to tell. Well, um, the overall number one thing is too good to be true. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is. It's the free money, too good to be true, incredible deal kind of thing. Another huge warning sign is when there is a time limit based upon things. If you will see, like these cons that we're talking about, the pigeon drop and that sort of thing, or what they refer to as short cons. And the reason is, is because it all takes place without the person going home and spending the night and, and being able to think about it. And so cons are very important that they happen very quickly before you have a chance to consult your mm. husband or your, you know, your daughter or something. And so there's a couple of real key signs. Which means that probably the people who are most vulnerable are? Uh, number one, the elderly. Yeah. Absolutely. They say 60% of all fraud victims are the elderly. And so you really have to watch out for your parents and your grandparents and that sort of thing. And really, you know, have a dialogue with them. You know, what are they spending their money on? There's, oh, mail order stuff is just absolutely rampant. It's there. We need laws. It's got to be stopped. You and know. if they get strange phone calls oh, uh, from people and repeated absolutely. phone calls, because they don't have anyone to turn around and ask, you know, does yes. this sound like a phony deal? This guy keeps yeah. calling me on the phone and wanting me to give money yeah. to something? And I would say, too, if, if you're an elderly person, not to have your um, number in the phone book. You know, they will look for names like Ida and Gertrude and mm -hmm. older sounding names, mm -hmm. and they will target those people. And if you do suspect a scam? Uh, you can call your consumer local district attorney's district office. District attorney's must office. Plug my own. Very good. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. <laughs> Anytime. Yeah. And and any of any of the other counties. There's also the National Fraud Information Center. I, I'm aware of that. Um, you can call and people who would like to reach someone like you because you can do background checks. Absolutely, absolutely. And we do that on a lot of con games sort of thing that comes into being. Right. Well, when we do come back after the break, uh, we're going to meet somebody who has lost a lot of money, unfortunately, to a con artist. We'll be right back.